We have this huge video library here at the Practical Sportsman we've collected over the past 20 years, and there's many things in there that I've taped and actually totally forgotten about, but great stuff. And what brings this to mind is an article I saw in the Detroit News that Dave Ritchie wrote about the legendary Fred Bear. Just so happens that the same week that I had my 55th birthday, Fred Bear would have been 99 years old. So I looked up uh, in our database to see what I had on Fred Bear. I have about 45 minutes of interviews with him. Let's take a look at some uncut footage that was taken at the Anderson Archery Clinic, 1983, when Fred Bear came through, and we had a fun little chat. You might as well just roll it, and I'm just going to chat with Fred Bear. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, well, we'll just chat for a second and get into it. Fred Bear, how does it feel to be back home? Feels good. Feels good. I get cooled off. Yeah? Yeah, it's warm down in Florida. I, I bet it's warm down there. Have you been uh, fishing up on the Osable? Yeah, I was up there. Uh, well, I got up there Friday night and had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. What's well, that, five limits then you got? <laughs> no? I got one small fish. It was raining and uh, somebody, I guess the Indians put on a rain dance or something. Oh. It was raining, and miserable and cold, and there were no hatches. So. Well, those trout are really hard to hit with an arrow anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hard to hit with an arrow. You can get pretty hungry doing that, I would guess. Yeah, well, you're, you're quite a fly fisherman, though. I'm just kidding about that. Yeah, I'm a fly fisherman. Yeah, we don't shoot uh, game fish, just mm -hmm. rough fish. Carp, suckers, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, with a bow. Archery has changed a lot since you started in the business. When did you start? 1933. You weren't born yet. No, I know it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Were you, you weren't making long bows. You are making recurves? Oh, sure, then? yes. And we made recurves at that time, yeah. Yeah, that was about the beginning of the recurve bow in this mm -hmm. country. Recurve bow is not new. The Turks made them thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, no, we made them in that time. Yeah. What, what about compound bows when they came in? Caused quite a furor and a lot of popularity. What do you think well, about it, really? The first uh, compound bows that we saw were samples that were sent up here by the guy that invented them from uh, mm -hmm. Alice uh, Allen from uh, Billings, Missouri. And uh, uh, I thought they were terrible. Of course, his first bows were not good looking. Uh, one of them was made out of a piece of water pipe huh. with uh, wheels on it. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it's pretty discouraging. And then later, he made some uh, better looking samples. And uh, they were all right, but uh, I still couldn't. I, I always have had in mind the bent, beautiful bow. Mm -hmm. And a compound bow is anything but beautiful, in my opinion. This this, this is the conventional type bow that I have here. This is and your modern had, recurve, the bare recurve. It has a nice lines, yeah, and it, mm -hmm. it's a takedown bow. But the common, the, the compound bow is taken over, and uh, it's an easier bow to shoot. The, the uh, weight drops off as you draw it back. This bow gets tighter as you draw it back. Mm -hmm. The compound. It, the cams come into action and it pulls about half the weight uh, when you got back full draw as it does at the beginning. So that's quite an advantage, yeah. Is that archery to you? Well, it's archery. Yeah, sure. You're shooting. You still have to do the, the same job. You have to draw all that weight and it gets easier to hold. But it doesn't have the romance? <laughs> no, it doesn't have the romance, no. Well, it has about, wheels and cables on it. How about stringing up this bow? Show us the the proper way to string. Well, the proper way to string is to step through it and bend it over your thigh and slip the string on. Okay. You got it like that. Ah, uh, there it is, the classic recurve. That's a, re a takedown recurve is what it is, yeah. The arrow knock is on the wrong side, though. Well, I'm left-handed, yeah. I know that. I'm just pulling your leg. Okay. Left-handed. Yeah. You shot all of these animals over the years. You've shot more big game animals with a bow than anybody, more records. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun doing it. Well, Fred, when I got in the archery business, it was in Detroit in uh, 1933. Mm -hmm. uh, those were bad years. That was the beginning of the end of the worst depression ever. There were no jobs. And I got in the archery business. That was uh, Fred Bear, piece, uh, a revered down, man back in 1983. And uh, an unconventional way of shooting, uh, sort of an unconventional attitude towards ball hunting, but he kept all of us in awe. Now, Fred had a great sense of humor, and a lot of people didn't know that. He exhibited that sense of humor at a banquet that we held in the fall of 1983 up at Houghton Lake in conjunction with a bow hunt. Fred was there. I was the MC of the banquet in the old Houghton Lake Playhouse, and we got a chance to see Fred Bear's sense of humor.
go to this one man and we owe him an awful lot. We should pay him the highest tributes for coming up here. It's a grand honor to welcome Fred Bear. I appreciate the fine introduction. Um, there, got a, uh, there are a lot of real nice fellows named Fred, um, in spite of the fact that it's a four-letter word, uh, which bear is also, and it's quite a, a weight that I carry around on my shoulders. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to have a little fun tonight. Um, I'll be finished. It'll take about two or three hours. So. <laughs> Settle back, uh, unbuckle your belts, and open your ties, and we'll get to it. But before we get into the fun thing, uh, I want to uh, get a little serious for a few uh, minutes. Uh, I want to talk about the decline in the quality of the ability of sportsmen to lie. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm real serious about this. When I was a kid, if a fella said he caught a fish three feet long, you could bet your last dollar that it wasn't a bit over 12 inches. If you shot a deer that weighed 300 pounds, you could bet your life also that it probably was a spotted fun. And uh, a sportsman or outdoorsmen have been traditionally known to be good liars. And I think we've fallen far short and I'm, I'm on a campaign to uh, improve the quality of uh, these things that I talk about. I, I am uh, suggesting that uh, nobody ever set foot in the woods without an alibi already prepared. <clears throat> you can get... You, <laughs> yeah. you can get caught short. Now, and I, refer, I take it back to uh, George Washington, you know, he cut down the cherry tree. And uh, his father, you know, caught him and he said, George, did you cut down the tree? He was absolutely without alibi and he said, yes, father, I can't tell a lie. I did cut down the cherry tree. Well, he was later to become president, you know, and imagine the guy president who can't tell a lie. Um, <laughs> He could have said, you know, if he'd been prepared, yeah, I just came around the corner of the house and I saw a beaver run off in the woods there and here's all the chips. But he, he, he was caught flat-footed. And during uh, my early boyhood, uh, and George Gardner's also, <laughs> one, of, one of the pranks the kids did at Halloween was to push over an outhouse. Now, I realize that uh, it's uh, hard to find an outhouse nowadays, but in those days you always could find some kind of a facility in the back of the house. And uh, this young lad pushed over the outhouse and his dad happened to uh, come around the corner and he uh, saw him kind of running off and he uh, later apprehended him and he said, did you uh, push the outhouse over? And uh, the kid said, yes, father, I cannot tell a lie. I pushed the outhouse over, relying on this George Washington business, you know. And his father beat the hell out of him. And <laughs> after he could get his breath back, uh, he said, well, Dad, you know, uh, George Washington cut down the tree. And he said, Father, I can't tell a lie. I cut down the tree. And I pushed over the outhouse and say the same thing. And you give me a beating. And the father said, well, George Washington probably wasn't in the tree when his father <laughs> 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 he cut it down. <laughs> So, all right, uh, so much for that. I hope you'll bear with me on there and, and uh, see if we can improve our ability to uh, lie better. We owe, we owe that. Okay. Fred Bear.
A tall man, a great man, a pioneer among hunters, the original ambassador for bow hunting. He lived in a good era before hunting became such a controversy and before our DNR became such a political institution. Fred Bear embodies what hunting was and what hunting should be. A food gathering activity, honest recreation focusing on camaraderie and fun. And that's no lie. Four times before, on a grizzly hunt at fall, 